Good morning. I'm Anson Massey, and I'm on my way to work. You know, I picked a good morning here. It's foggy. I'm on a road with no shoulder going 65 miles per hour, and it's hog country and deer country. But you know what? Some of the stuff I want to talk about just couldn't wait any longer. There's quite a few very interesting headlines going on, especially in the sports world. Let's see, where do we start? Why don't we start with the uh, with good old Lance Armstrong? I remember it was actually fairly early in my radio career. I just moved to the city. <coughs> Excuse me. Following Lance Armstrong when he won all those Tour de France titles, he had punched cancer in the mouth, lived strong. This guy was the hero. Well, you know what? It, he finally kind of sort of came clean the other night with our good old friend Oprah, who everybody will pour their hearts out to, and said that yes, he admitted it. He was, in fact, doping while he was cycling. Um, no joke. We know. Here's why. Here's the deal. Let's say little Tommy Tugnuts on the playground, and five kids come up to the playground monitor, the teacher, and say, little Tommy Tugnuts throwing rocks. One by one, they all come up. Little Tommy Tugnuts throwing rocks. Well, you know what? Little Tommy Tugnuts probably throwing rocks if that many people come forward. Then we say, little Tommy, come here. Are you throwing rocks? Uh, no. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of what we had here. Several of his teammates not only said that he was doping and was probably doping as much or more than anybody else was doping, but he was making them do it too. He was the team leader. He was in charge of the hiring and firing of his cycling teams. And he would say, hey, we're going to win at all cost. You're going to dope. And there were some that stood up and said, no, I don't want to dope. Uh, you can dope or you're fired. Take this or you're fired. Here's a needle to the butt or you're fired. And uh, listening to how they did this, I mean, what these guys do to their bodies to win. I mean, wow, what a price there is on winning right now. These guys had blood transfusions. They took certain drugs. It was done under the table. It was done, you know, money was transferred over Swiss bank accounts, foreign bank accounts. It looked like a pretty good mafia movie, if you ask me. But anyway... Finally, the truth comes out. <clears throat> My thought is this. Did he not learn from Pete Rose? Or, uh, well, Roger Clemens hadn't come clean yet, but same situation. We all know he was doing it. Uh, I mean, come on. The guy had a big old abscess on his butt. I wonder what that was from. But anyway, <clears throat> Pete Rose will never be in the Hall of Fame because he bet on baseball and didn't admit to it. Now, Andy Pettit. Let's talk about that guy just real quick. This was in the steroid era where everybody was doing it. We all know this. And everybody said, I did not do steroids. I cannot be any more clear than that, Rafael Palmero. Well, yeah, you did. Andy Pettit just said, y'all accuse me of doing steroids? Okay, let's have a press conference. All right, everybody. Yeah, I did it. Here's why. Here's what I did. Everybody else is doing it. I did it. My elbow hurt. Yada, 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 yada. You've heard nothing about Andy Pettit using steroids since then. He came clean, everybody forgave him for it, and they moved on. The ones we keep harping on are the ones that are like, No, I didn't do it. No, I didn't do it. Yes, you did. We all know it. So anyway, I think I'm done with that. Lance Armstrong, he's a doper. We know it. Is he still your hero? That's the question. He never was. Fine. I admired him for what he did. Anybody that can survive cancer like that, and go on to accomplish what he did, <clears throat> I think it's pretty amazing. But he did cheat. But you know what? Everybody else is doing it. So the pressure of winning, the price of winning, make your own assessment as to what it's worth for you. Anyway, Manti Teo, runner-up for the Heisman, runner-up for the national championship, not even close to the best linebacker in the country, if you ask me. But story broke just you know, over the last week or so that uh, this mysterious girlfriend that died on the same day his grandmother did back in September that inspired him to play better doesn't even exist. Uh, and here, here's the thing, here's the crazy part. Everybody, this seems to be the lead story going on around the country other than Lance Armstrong. We're not talking about gun control. We're not about finding new jobs. We're talking about improving the economy of this country or improving the country in general. We're talking about Manti Teo's long-lost, non-existing girlfriend. <laughs> Everybody just wants to analyze the daylights out of this 
and try to make a big deal out of it. And it's like, why would we? Why do we want to waste our time on this college boy's online girlfriend that probably never existed in the first place? Why do we even want to waste our time on it? Who cares? So anyway, let's analyze it. Okay. Manti Teo obviously had an online relationship with this girlfriend and obviously never met her in person. I guess he talked to somebody on the phone that was uh, pretending to be the girlfriend. Was he the victim of a sick joke or was he really in on this? Was this something that he put in play to try to get a little extra attention? Uh, maybe to try to push him forward to the Heisman Trophy? Well, it didn't win him the Heisman Trophy. Sure as heck didn't win him a national championship. So. Make, make your own assessment as to what it was, whether he was involved, whether he was not. But anyway, it's like this. The dude don't look good. <clears throat> yeah, he's a decent football player, but have you seen the guy? How much action do you think this guy actually gets? The closest action he's probably come was the lay that he wore at the Heisman Trophy presentation. So, <clears throat> yeah, he probably had an online girlfriend. Who doesn't? When you think about all, back in the 90s, the 2000s, when everybody used to chat online, you could have a three-way by chatting with three different women at one time. You don't know what they look like. But they put a picture on their profile. <clears throat> yeah, okay, sure. Could be the bearded lady. I can find pictures on the internet and put on a profile, and I can pretend to be anybody. So, you know, Manti's a little off. But, uh, you know, if it made him happy during the season, it made him happy. But I'm sure he's pretty ticked off when he found out that uh, this girl's not real. But did you ever think, maybe we should meet in person? Let my way over your way. Think we should meet in person? Something had to find, you know, I'd have found it a little fishy at some point. But you know what? To each their own. You believe what you believe. And that is that. But, you know, thankfully it didn't win him the national championship. Because a lot of people really hopped on this bandwagon. They really felt for the guy. Oh, man, a double tragedy. All on the same day, his grandmother, his girlfriend, oh, boo-hoo, boo-hoo. Look, it's inspired him to play better for the University of Notre Dame. He's still not the best linebacker in the country. He's not even close. So, what else can we talk about today? Um, probably coming up in the eight-minute mark, so I'll probably wrap up pretty soon. Do I talk about the Dallas Cowboys? Do I not talk about the Dallas Cowboys? Everybody's talking about the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, I'm just going to say this about the Dallas Cowboys. The problem is attitude. Everybody's afraid of messing with Jerry Jones and making him mad. Because he's the puppet master. Jerry Jones wants yes-men, like a Jason Garrett. Is the non-yes-man of the group? Was the only guy that improved any of the attitude on the team, and that was Rob Ryan. He took that defense and did a hell of a job with that defense. Even with all the injuries. They were 31st in the league when he took over. He made them a lot better. But he wasn't a yes-man for Jerry Jones. That's why he's the one that got canned. That's so bass backwards. That's about all I can say about that. And I'm not even a Cowboys fan, so I don't know why I'm getting upset. To me, it's actually quite funny to watch everything unfold. Anyway, that's my take on it. Lance Armstrong, Manti Teo, and a little bit of the Dallas Cowboys. I hope I've entertained all my viewers out there, all six of you. Actually, I think it's two of you that repeat viewing it on occasion. Anyway, spread the word. Let's get some more viewers. Let's have some fun with this thing. Have a great day. I'm Anson Massing, and I'm on my way to work.